and welcome. My name is Christine and I have Common Variable Immune Deficiency, aka CVID. And today I want to give five tips to help make preparing for college and managing your way through college with CVID a little bit easier. Going to college can be a scary and exciting time for any 18 year old, but having CVID definitely adds its challenges. I was 16 when I was diagnosed, so that was in a period of my life where I was wondering what I was gonna be doing with college, would I be going away to school, would I be staying local? And I definitely had a lot of things to learn along the way. I wanna give some advice that I learned that I feel like would be beneficial to others going through the same thing. My first tip would be communicate with your doctor. Having CVID means you should already be having pretty regular interval visits with your immunologist. Really, your doctor should know what's going on in your overall life. If you're a senior in high school, are you intending on applying to colleges? Are you intending on doing something else? Are you gonna move away from home? They really should be in the loop of kind of what's going on in your life. I know my immunologist knows more about my life than any other physician that I see, and he still does to this day. He's known when I went off to UF, he's known when I was in physical therapy school, and he knows where I work now, and it's really nothing has been a surprise. Your doctor is going to be your best resource of helping you out with any issues that might come along the way. He might be able to give you any recommendations of other physicians that he might know in the area that could help you out if need be. I felt like a lot of advice that I got from people when I was wondering if I should go to way to school or not was to just play it on the safe side. Like, don't, why are you thinking of leaving your support system? Why are you thinking of moving? You need to stay here, you need to stay at home, you need to stay by your doctor, you need to stay local, like just stay put. My immunologist was actually the one that supported me. And it was the same thing when I went to physical therapy school. A lot of people were like, why do you want to go into healthcare having CVID? And my doctor supported it. So definitely you want to communicate with your doctor. Obviously, if there's something that you want to do that they really don't recommend as the best, take your doctor's recommendation into consideration. But if your doctor is giving you his or her blessings, then I say go for it. My second tip would be to register with the school's disability office. Now, this is something that I think people don't always think about and I didn't think about it, nobody told me about it, it kind of was just something that I figured out. What can registering with the school's disability office do for you? There was a few things that it, it helped me out with. One of them was that I could have a modified schedule. When I was in college, in order to stay on your parents' health insurance, you had to be a full-time student. Thankfully, that is no longer the law and anyone in the United States, the age of 26 and younger, can stay on their parents' health insurance whether they're a full-time student or not. But we never know how the laws might change or if there's any other areas where you might have to show full-time status, they can let you take less classes than would be considered full-time, but the school will still list you as a full-time student. I ended up having to go below the full-time schedule because I got really sick my first year, not to discourage you from going away. It definitely helped out that I could kind of take less classes and take more care of my health at the time. Another benefit that I got was I had access to early registration. I was able to register for classes when the athletes did, when the honors students did. The second the registration opened, I had access to it. This was helpful and this was probably the biggest benefit that I had that other people wish that they had as well because I was able to get the schedule that I wanted. I always got in the classes that I needed. It made things easier because having CVID, you have to juggle your infusions, you might have to juggle doctors of visits. So it it is beneficial to kind of get that as ideal as you can class schedule. 
Another thing that they can provide is having the school allow you to be able to drink water in the classroom. This is something that's going to depend school on school, professor to professor, whether how strict they are on allowing you to drink water or not in the classroom. We have to drink a lot of water on the days of our infusions and sometimes professors might give you a hard time about it. Now, if your professor is not going to know you have this. They don't need to know any background details. The way the University of Florida did it was the disability office provide a, a letter. It was in a sealed envelope so there was no way that you could alter the information. It would just tell the professor, you are registered with the disability office. These are the reasonable accommodations. If you have any questions, contact them. They don't list what you have and they really don't go into any further detail. It was a non-issue for me to provide it to the professors that I did provide it to. Another thing that I was able to get was a semi-private dorm room. The idea of college and living in that dorm where there's one bathroom to a hall and it's 50 random people sharing this bathroom and they're probably disgusting is not the best thing for somebody with CVID. My doctor was able to include in his letter that I needed a semi-private dorm room and not be in this community bathroom situation. The school was able to guarantee me a dorm that was more uh, apartment-like style. We had a little kitchen and living room and there was four rooms so four of us stayed there and two bathrooms. So I only had to share a bathroom with one person. It is definitely better than having to share with 50 people but that was a great benefit. I know schools they can't guarantee that you will be in a good dorm or a bad dorm but if you have a letter from your physician you shouldn't have troubles with the school being able to accommodate that. My third tip is make sure you have arranged with how and where and when you are going to get your infusions. I did both IVIG and sub-QIG in my period where I was up at the University of Florida. Doing sub-Q is definitely easier to manage. They really only have to send the medicine to you and then you do your thing. IV is a little more challenging but it is not impossible. But some things that you might want to consider when arranging for your infusions such as does your home health agency have a licensure for nurses in the county you're going to? I know one of the agencies that I used they weren't licensed in Alachua County where Gainesville is. I ended up actually having to drive two hours east to Jacksonville and I had some of my infusions at my grandmother's house and I had some at my aunt's house because they were licensed in that county but they weren't licensed in the county where my school was. Other issues that might come up is parking. In Gainesville, parking is hard to find at times. <laughs> especially if you don't have a parking pass for living wherever you are living. But it's not impossible and you should be able to get around it. When I was living on campus, I had to call the parking office beforehand, give my student ID, my name, and I basically just told them I have to have a home health nurse and you have to give her a parking pass. They didn't really push me any further than that. It's probably not a common call that they get. My nurse had to go there. She had to pick up the pass and she was able to park in front of my dorm room. So that's definitely something you want to set up because you do not want your nurse's car to get towed while you're getting your infusion done. The same thing with apartment complexes. Again, in Gainesville, not all apartments had visitor spots. I couldn't expect my nurse to be parking way out yonder and making her way to my apartment. Before she came, I went to the front desk and said, look, I have to get a home health nurse. She has to be able to park by my apartment complex, not at the front, and walk a mile to my apartment. They gave her a pass and it was a non-issue from there. My fourth tip would be to get a mini fridge. Why? Why would you need a mini fridge to store your medicine? <laughs> Immune globulin is really expensive. You may have a roommate that you've never met before. 
chances are they will not do anything, but you don't really want to risk this expensive medication to be accidentally thrown out or dropped or who knows what. I felt safer having my own mini fridge that I knew I was storing my immune globulin in and it was safe and not to be accidentally misplaced by somebody else. My last and final tip would be to make sure you schedule your immunologist visits during your breaks. So winter break, summer break, spring break, you want to set those up beforehand because they are popular times for a lot of people to go to the doctor when they're off school, especially if you're seeing a pediatric doctor. I, at 28, am still seeing a pediatric immunologist, so you probably will be at 18. You want to make sure you have these visits scheduled well in advance because while you're home, you want to see your doctor. You tend to have to have a doctor's visit every so often for the immune globulin, and you just don't want to run into any issues with that. So those are my tips. I hope they are helpful to someone out there and can make your transition to college a little bit smoother. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave a comment and ask. I will do my best at helping out. If you found this helpful, you can give me a thumbs up and hit the like button. And if you have CVID and you would like to stay tuned for more videos that I will make about living with CVID. You can hit the subscribe button and stay tuned. Bye!